So let's talk about Pulse Plus. Pulse Plus ran for 16 years on Channel 13 during the noon hour under the supervision of a guy by the name of Joe Wizicky. The show combined news, sports, weather, and entertainment. The first anchor of Pulse Plus was a guy brought in here from Milwaukee, our sister station up there, by the name of Scott Schuster. He also served as a morning anchor on Breakfast Beat and Weekend 6 and 11 anchor for Pulse. So here to talk about Pulse Plus and Joe Wizicky, live from New York on Saturday night, Scott Schuster. Thank you very much, Ray. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ray. Well, when, uh, when Ray Dantzler, uh decided to uh, take Pulse Midday to a full hour, of course, he started a national search for the perfect host. He called the former news director of Channel 2 in New York, Joe Lachlan. Figured Joe would know somebody really great, right? Joe called me in. I was doing the 11 o'clock news in Milwaukee, a station, a town where everybody likes to watch the news at 10. And uh, he suggested I might want to go to Tampa. And uh, I said yes. Uh, Joe, by the way, gave me my very first on-air opportunity as the host of the uh, student show when I was at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. That student show ran for more than 30 years, Joe. News Focus was still running in Milwaukee until just a few years ago. A wonderful not-for-profit resource for the broadcasting students in Milwaukee that our Joe Lachlan created. <laughs> Bravo. Of course, once Joe hired me, he was desperately looking for a way to get rid of me. And so when Ray called, I was 22 years old and uh, dispatched to Florida. I'll leave it to Charlie and Cy and Jewel and uh, uh, Leslie and Ray and Mike and Roy and Howard Shapiro to uh, regale you with uh, stories of what an egotistical, big-haired anchor boy I truly was <laughs> in 1972. Uh, Jewel used to, used to say, Schuster the rooster takes a long time to get used to. <laughs> I plead guilty, and all I can say is, let's do that again real soon. That was a lot of fun. The late Pat Colmenares was our hostess doing uh, noontime interviews. Pat became one of this area's premier real estate agents. Roy Leap himself was our first meteorologist. Bob Stone on sports. Bruce Hutchcraft would join us sometimes as well at noon. Uh, Pulse Plus, what a great format. The nation's first one-hour noon show. At that time, the area's population skewed much older than it does today. We had an average age here of 55. And, uh, of course, uh, we had a lot of Midwestern immigrants who used to watch the news at 10, where they came from. So you combine that with the weakness of Channel 10's signal at that time, and you can see how we would get sometimes a 54 share uh, on this program. And a much larger audience watching at noon than at 11 p.m. The producer of the show, as Ray mentioned, was Joe Wizicky, sweet guy, great guy, wonderful to deal with. And I'm going to share some stories of Joe with you now. Mike tells me Joe was uh, hired by Ken Smith in 1959. He served in projection and as floor manager and as director of Mary Ellen, and then as the producer of Breakfast Beat and Pulse Plus. Joe was in his Floorman studio days in February of 1962 when he was dispatched along with the Channel 13 mobile unit on board the USS Randolph, the prime recovery ship for astronaut John Glenn's historic flight, the first American orbital voyage in space, the nation's urgent answer to Yuri Gagarin. And uh, as a result of Joe being sent, we have this wonderful video acquisition to share with you now. Listen to the network guidance given to Joe as he shot these historic photos. Joe, stay with him. That's the greatest bit in the world, Joe. Just say, hey, go in and he'll turn around. Go ahead. Say, hey, Colonel. Hey, say, hey, Colonel. Turn around for TV. Go ahead. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, baby, Joe. <laughs> oh, brother, what a shot you have, kid. 
Incredible. Great work by Joe Wizicki in 1962. What a time that was for Channel 13. They did that kind of thing all the time with that spectacular mobile unit. Well, now, Joe, he was more than just a TV guy. He always wanted to make movies. And he finally made one in 1968, a feature entitled Willie's Gone. Uh, he financed it himself and with what he could collect from you. Did anybody here lose money on <laughs> Willie's Gone? Yeah, yeah, look, there they are. Six years later, he tried it again with Satan's Children using uh, Channel 13 employees as crew and as extras. The, uh, show, the movie was shot near Gibsonton in a barn in the summer. <laughs> barn with a metal roof. Yes, they were trying to make it look like hell. <laughs> anyway, Joe was better at show than biz once again. And Satan's children did not make money. But thanks to uh, the science of digital technology, we uh, can all view Satan's children on DVD. Now, Mike has selected for us an excerpt uh, just to give you a, a taste of what's available to you on this hot DVD. <laughs> the, the bad guy has chased the hero into the woods. He's wearing only his underwear. He's about to be dragged away to someplace bad, but then the bad guy falls into quicksand. The quicksand looks like oatmeal. Looks like oatmeal because it is. <laughs> you, know? uh, you wonder why Quaker Oats shares zoomed up in the summer of 1974? That increase in share price was your investment in Satan's children going up. Let's watch Satan's children. buy that DVD. <laughs> Thank you very much, Joe Wizicki. What a great guy.